go to Mark chapter 5. Father, we thank you for your anointing tonight that destroys yokes and bondages and hindrances, addictions, all type of things that the enemy will come up on us with. We all came here tonight for different expectations and we're looking to leave differently than the way we came in a better state of mind. We thank you tonight, Lord God, because you say if we ask, you would give it to us and we need your wisdom tonight on how to cast out demons we need your wisdom of discernment to discern if it's truly a sickness or if it or if it's demonic we need your wisdom tonight lord because doctors are wondering and they're figuring out what's going on and they're not familiar with everything and giving people all kind of medicine and having surgery on people when it's something that needs to be cast out, a spirit that is destroying the bodies of the people. So tonight, Father, we come asking you for revelation knowledge so that we can be the light of the world that you created us to be and to close and shut down darkness that is trying to overwhelm this nation because you created us for such a time as this. And we really have been told we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. You have all kinds. But we thank you for discernment, Lord, that we will be able to come up against those demonic spirits. And when all is said and done, we'll still be standing strong, healthy, and whole. And we give you glory, honor, and praise tonight in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. You know, a lot of people are being sickly and going through a lot of changes and the doctors are guessing they don't really know really what's going on they kind of think if the manifestation one person that went this way they'll take it for everybody and that's why we can't be ignorant of Satan's devices because everybody don't have the same thing because to them it look like it's the same and all things you know it's not just sickness some things are demonically you know intrude, intrusion on you your mind, your will, your emotions, your body, and all sort of things. You know, that's why God tells us, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. You know, because if you think about it, sometimes they'll put you on medicine, and they don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And plain medicine don't do anything for a spirit. You know, we need to know that. It don't matter how long you take it. They say, well, it's not working. They think it's not working. Well, it ain't supposed to work because... It's the spirit you're working with. And only the word of God can come up against that spirit. That's right, because we are spirits, and there are demonic spirits in this world. And when they see God's people trying to learn about what is going on, he comes at them very strong. But don't be afraid, because they have no power over you. None. It's just a spirit. But we're going to be talking about what is a demon, okay? deliverance a demon is a fallen angel listen to this when satan who was the very highest angel rebelled against god he took a large number of the angels with him in rebellion let's look at isaiah 14 let's turn to isaiah 14 now we're going to be teaching out of mark but i want you to see what i'm talking about i'm laying a foundation isaiah 14 I'm going to have uh, this Xerox this, that the Lord gave me. I shared it Sunday with some of you all, but I guess everybody don't want it, but Michelle wanted it, so if it ain't but for nobody but her. What is God trying to tell you in this time and season in your life? Don't let this time and this season pass you by. This is the time, this is the season, and this is the place where God wants to change your life. You will be able to walk out of your current situation, leave your past behind, and 
prove to yourself and the world that you and you're a child of God with purpose and a child of God with a divine destiny in your life. People need to, people need to know that what, where we at right now is not where God created us to be. And we were destined for a purpose. And God is working on that. And he's saying where we at right now, we're teaching. That's what we're supposed to be. A lot of people don't understand this teaching, but it's so important. You know, a lot of people are not being trained and taught about demonic spirits. You know, they don't even pay that no attention. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's just something that if you don't get no relief in something, you're constantly praying and praying and don't get a relief. Ask the Holy Spirit and he might tell you, this is something that has to be cast out. You know, and it's just saying, I command this spirit of infirmity to get out of my body. Come on now. Because the spirit of infirmity can carry all kinds of sickness and diseases. And the name of it is infirmity. That's right. That's the devil. That's what Satan is giving his devils different names to come and do different things. Are y'all listening to me? But God has given the church revelation knowledge on everything that we would have to fight up against. And we're going to make our destiny. We're going to get there. God wouldn't have told us if we was not going to get there. Don't nobody get all scared and woo, you know. Isaiah 14. We're going to be excited. Because when you leave out of here, you probably feel lighter. Because when you start coming against these devils, they leave. You know, and you tell them to leave quietly. Don't tear nobody. Just get out. And you know, demons hate it when you tell them to go. You know that? I never will forget when I first started going through deliverance. I cried a lot. And I was wondering, what is going on? I'm just crying. She said, that's how they leave. They don't want to leave and they're crying because they got to get out. They want to stay there and destroy you. They're hiding. And so you're commanding them to go. That's why they're crying. Because they've been exposed. Are you all with me? So don't think you're losing your mind when you start crying. You're getting rid of devils. <laughs> I'm serious. Right. Absolutely. God is exposing things in this hour. And I am so glad. Because nobody have answers. Nobody but God. You know, we've been going along with everybody's I think it's this, I think it's that. Christian scientists, all kinds of stuff. This lady was a Christian scientist and her daughter had a brain tumor and uh, they wanted to do surgery. And so a lady had called her mom and said, why don't you bring her down here, they're doing deliverance. And she began to share with them what all that they do in deliverance. So she was saying, I don't know, I'll try it. I don't really, you know, Christian scientists, you know, they, I don't know if anybody familiar with Christian scientists, Christian science at least. Because when you die, they cut you up to try to find out what is going on. If they can find a cure, that's what they do. They cut your body up to try to find a cure. Oh, yeah. I knew some Christian science people. But anyway, getting back to this lady, she uh, finally decided to bring her daughter, you know, because they were saying, why have surgery when you can go try this out? And sure enough, she brought her daughter there. And the Lord gave her discernment on what that spirit was that had opened up the door for that brain tumor to come. And she got set free just like that. You know, so God is moving, saints. We just need to move with him. Amen. And stop being afraid of everything that we hear. You know, everything that we hear. I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name. Get off the number here, king. And you, brother. Let me finish with Isaiah. Look, start at verse 12. Isaiah 14, let's start at verse 12. When you get 12, let's say amen. We're talking about the fall of Lucifer now. How are you? How you are fallen from heaven. See, they're talking about the devil, okay? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. You see that? He weakened the nations because they don't understand spiritual things. So he'll come in with some things to tear, weak the, weaken the nations. The doctors don't know what to do about it, the judges. So he's weakening them because they have fallen all these demonic things. 
And when you don't know what is going on, the blind leads the blind. And instead of us having wisdom on what to do and how to do it, we're following something, a pattern that is not true. And it'll carry you to the end of nothing. So everybody know that Satan used to be a beautiful angel. He was a praise and worship angel that God had appointed him. Michael was the warring angel. And Gabriel was the, the messenger angel. He brought messages to you. So Satan used to lead the angels every morning for praise and worship before the Lord. He was beautiful. He had all kinds of diamonds and, and carbuncles and rubies. And he just, you know, just glimmered, you know, just shining, you know, the glory of God through those. And he got puffed up one time. He was like, wow, if I can do what these angels are worshiping God, I'm teaching them, I can teach them how to worship me. Are you listening to me? So he wanted to sit on the throne. Where do you think jealousy came from? It all came from him. Competition, it all came from him. All of these things, when you read your Bible, you'll see what God created and what Jesus operated out of. That's what we're supposed to be operating out of. We're not supposed to be operating out of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, competition. All that came from Satan. And he knew how to tear God's kingdom down. So when he found out that he was getting ready to be kicked out of heaven because he was trying to take God's throne, he went to a third of the angels and promised them jobs that he would give them positions if they would follow him. And they followed him. That's what you call demons now. Those are the demons, demon spirits. So Satan instructs them, instruct them on what to do to God's people because he's angry because God kicked him out of heaven. He didn't get a chance to sit on the throne. So he's constantly trying to come at God through his people, Amen. through his creation. Yes. You know, and he know that that would break God's heart because he know God loves his people. He know that God died for his people, you know. And so the only way he can get back at God is through us. And that's why we need to learn who we are and stop following the devil. Come on, dear heart. You know, because we can resist. You know what I'm saying? We can resist the devil. You know, but so much that he have placed on the inside of us, these things that he loved, that's what he put in us. And we begin to love it because we are not natural. Come on now. But if we will start loving the things that God created for us, it will supersede anything that Satan could ever suggest. You see what I said? You who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. This is Satan talking about what all he would do. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. See that? Exalt. And it's sad that that's the spirit of pride. That's the spirit of pride. When you start seeing people being put in positions and things of that nature, it's sad if they don't know God. Because these positions think you are somewhere that you shouldn't be. You know, and that you can rule over people because you're in a certain spot. Well, where did you think that came from? It just came out of the Bible. That's where it just came from. I'll exalt, you know, not saying that you know something that maybe I can ask, you know, maybe I can sit with you and understand and talk with you, you know, and see how did you get in that position? You know, not trying to come against you, but wisdom. Are you listening to me? Wisdom. How did you come about this? And, you know, how did you go about doing it? You know, not trying to come and get your position, but this is what he was doing. Say, are you listening to me? That's why we got all this pride. That's why God said, I resist the proud, but I give grace to the humble. Proud for people comes from Satan, that spirit. It comes from him. And God resists that spirit. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. See that he want to run everything. God's congregation, I'm serious. And, and people are ignorant of what Satan is doing, and we wind up being a part that, you know, we wind up taking on those spirits, and you wonder where they came from. Well, this is where they came from. On the farther side of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be, what, well, you see that? I, I, I. Come on, that's pride. That's in the middle of pride. P-R-I. I. See, everything you would say, I will ascend. I will exalt. I will sit. I will ascend. Look here. 
I would be like the most high. Never. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol. God is talking now. To the lowest depth of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble? See there? It says, Satan ain't nothing but mouth. He about this big, but nothing but mouth. His mouth is big, he's talking. But you know he can't be too big and he's under our feet. Come on, how big can he be? We just need to get some wisdom and stop getting upset and afraid about everything. You know, running and hiding and going along with people telling us because they got positions. How many doctors did God ordain? That's what I look for. How many doctors are following God? Did they get in it for the money or did they get in it because it was a gift to God and they wanted to help people? You know, you have to really find out where folk is at and what they're doing for what they're doing it for. It's just like the politicians. You have to find out where they're at. You know, are they trying to get a position to run and be powerful? Are they trying to help the people to ascend where God wants them to be and do their jobs right? You know, and it's just time for God's people to start knowing who we are and whom we are and what he's promised us. So, those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? See that? Who opened the house of the prisoners? All right. He said he didn't open up the house, but everybody is following him. Why are they following him if he didn't open up the house? It's because we need to know in that word what it means. Jesus came to set the captives free. That's right. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So when you start reading all of this and getting the knowledge of who God is, right away you'll start casting down thoughts because Satan fights thoughts. That's what he do. That's the stronghold that's in your mind. And you'll start fighting those thoughts. And if you have not built yourself up enough for the Holy Spirit to move a word out of your belly into your mouth, Satan will win. But he can't win against us. Right. He's fighting a losing battle for those that know who they are in Christ. He's fighting a losing battle. And we just need to stand up and tell him, no, this has been taken care of already. I don't have to fight you about this. This is done. And I command you, wherever you say, get off of this. That's right. Leave it alone. Let it go. Right. Talk. That's the demand. That, that's decrees. God said whatever we decree. What did he say? It would be established. We're not decreeing like we should. We're praying too much. It's just stop praying so much and start decreeing. I mean, you ain't got the prayers already done. Jesus did that. What you're praying about? It's ours. Why are we praying about something that belonged to us? We need to decree it. We need to run him off. Right. Get off of this. Get back. That's why Abraham told us, call those things though they be not, as though they are, because they already are. You need to just call them. Right. If you want to catch, you don't call the dog. Come on now, you call what it is that you're calling for. You know, we are praying about stuff we shouldn't even be praying about. It's ours. And it's just time for us to get real. We groping around in the dark. He the one supposed to be groping in the dark. Okay, now let's go over to, I'm laying a foundation. Let's go over to Revelations. Wait a moment, let me see. 14, 12 through 15. Let's go to Revelations now. 12, Revelations chapter 12. You know, a lot of times what happens, Satan will make us start feeling wrong when doctors start diagnosing stuff and we feel like, well, they know, so, you know, why should I? No, I don't receive that. Right. I don't receive that. You know, you don't have to say it to them right now, but, you know, you, you got to open your mouth and say if you have to walk in the waiting room. I don't receive that. Right. And I call whatever he called out of order, I call it in order. That's right. I call it to function. Are y'all still with me so far? I call it to function the way that God created it, fearfully and wonderfully. I call it. Don't be afraid to do that. God moves in the impossible. God will do the impossible if we would just move out and open our mouths. That's what he wanted to do in this hour. He wanted to show 
his people and he's still yet on the throne. Satan ain't on the throne. Let's look at verse. Verse 3. Let's look at 12 3. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. You see how the devil can turn himself into so many things? What do we know that he turned himself into? The angel of light. Yeah, he was not supposed to be in that meeting, okay? God had given a, a meeting for all the angels to be there. And Satan turned himself into an angel of light. The other angels didn't even recognize it. But Jesus said, who invited you here? He want us to have discernment. Are y'all listening to me? We be among folks and we don't have discernment. We be among folks speaking stuff and we don't have no discernment on And they shouldn't be speaking that. They're supposed to be diagnosed and not prophesying. You know, prophesying men, they prophesying your future. They're not supposed to prophesy your future. They're supposed to diagnose what they see, what they think. You know. And they start telling folks, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. They don't know that. They have no idea. They don't know that. And if you don't receive it, that won't come to pass. So now let's go to five, Mark, we had five, Mark five. Let's go there. Jesus. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, God. I got to go to Mark four first. Before I go to five, let's go to Mark 4. We're talking about the parable of the sword. I know we don't heard that a lot, but uh, we need to, huh? Yeah, yeah, this is something we need to really get down on the inside of us. And again, he, we're talking about Jesus. And again, he began to teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him so that he got into a boat and set in on the sea and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. You see, this is a time when you're going to find multitudes of people hearing truth and they're going to follow. This is, what God, this is the hour God is in right now. His people are seeking and searching things. They, you know, they done been everywhere and nothing is changing. And, and a lot of them raised in church, been sitting in church all their lives. And just ain't nothing happening. That's why a lot of them are leaving out because there's no demonstration, teaching. And demonstration goes together. You don't just teach and don't demonstrate. In other words, you don't break it down so that they can use it. Come on, that's demonstration. When they get through teaching, they tell you this is what you do. And when this happens, this is what you do. And if you follow the demonstration like Jesus tells you, that will come to pass. But a lot of times we either add to it, take away, or they said something so detrimental we're afraid to try it. And, you know, and we won't back up off of it and we'll go into it. So it's, this is the hour. God said his people are going to step right out. They're going to step, they're not going to even think. Because he's going to be so strong in them. And he, when something come against them, they're going to speak what he tell them to speak. That's how the change is going to come. Then he taught them many things, at verse 2, by parables, and said to them in his teaching, listen, behold, a sore went out to sore. He's telling us in this hour, listen. When you hear the word, listen, ponder that word. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Now the seed is the word of God, okay? So you see some of it fell, you know. It didn't fall where it should have fell in the people, all right? It was just falling everywhere. That's when people are not discerning. That's when people are not really focused. When you come to church, you need to be focused. You know, because it's so quick for Satan to take your mind somewhere. You know, start thinking about something else. And when you come around, you hear something say, wow, how did we get to verse 5? Huh? You know, I'm still concentrating on 2. How did you get over there? It's so important to bring your mind in when you come in so that you can hear exactly what Jesus said. He said, those that have ears to hear, 
Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. When he's teaching, he's not teaching from his intellect or his head. He's teaching from his spirit. So hear what he's saying. Well, it goes spirit to spirit. But you got to be quiet so you can receive. That's why we don't need people talking and, you know, rumbling and, and, and you know, different things. Be quiet. Maybe you don't want to hear, but others want to hear it. Are y'all still with me so far? We, we, this is a crucial hour, saints, and we just got to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Some fell on stony ground where it didn't have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among the thorns, and, and thorns grew up and, and choked it and yielded. You know, sometimes you can see grass growing up through concrete. <laughs> you know, everything falling in the wrong place. They ain't where it's supposed to be. Right. And the word ain't supposed to be in our head. It's supposed to be in our heart. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some 30-fold. See, everybody gets a, a part of what they're hearing. Some 60 and some 100. And he said to them, he who has what? Ears. Let them hear. Come on, if you got some ears, you can hear what part do you want to be. I want to be the 100 fold. I don't want to be the third and the sixth. I want to be the 100 fold. So when I speak, things will change. Things will happen and turn around and do what I'm speaking. That's what we want. We want the 100 fold. Now he's going to tell them the purpose of the parables. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve and asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you, it has been given to know the mysteries. And you know what he's saying? He's saying to us, it's been given to know the mysteries, but we got to search it out. It's been given to us to know the mysteries. You know, when I first read that, read that years ago, I didn't understand. I said, what is a parable? You know? He had to tell me it was a story. You know, he break things down to a story. What What is the seed, you know? Because I didn't know that. A lot of people read and they just assume. You know, even if somebody see, ask for yourself sometime. Are you all listening to me? And you know, the reason I say ask for yourself, you'll begin to hear his voice better. You know, you'll be in tune like, Lord, you know what? I heard my pastor preach this, but what do this mean to me? You know, I want to hear his voice, you know? That's what we want to start hearing, that quiet, still voice. And he will. He'll begin to answer you in those areas, you know? And especially when you write your notes down, you want to break this, break, you know, I wrote this down, break it down to me so I can receive it in my heart. You know, break it down to that degree where I can really receive it and search out things. And he said to them, you know, it was a mystery of the kingdom. See what he said? Not to church. Look what he said. To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. You know why he said that? Because we don't. We know the, we know the church. We know religion. But we don't know the kingdom of God. See, we need to know what's in the kingdom of God. How are you going to desire something when you don't know what it is or where it's at? In the kingdom, we'll find out the signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverance, miracles. That's the kingdom. That's why he told us to pray that his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We just prayed that we would never talk what it meant. But it was just a, a, a prayer that we prayed all the time. But we didn't know what was in the kingdom, so we didn't know what was supposed to come down here to the kingdom, you know, to bring the kingdom down here. And so this is the hour that God is telling us what's in the kingdom so we can start desiring it. You know, you can't desire something if you don't know what it's all about or what it is. Thank you, Father. And he said to them, you know, the mysteries we're supposed to know, look at 12, so that seeing they may see, not perceive, and not perceive. And hear, they may hear, and not understand. See there? We done seen them do demonstrations. They done taught, and we didn't understand it. We were just listening to them and watching things, but we didn't understand it. That's why he said we see it, and not what? Understand. Not understanding. Right. And that is so dangerous. That's with anything. That you are being trained something, but you don't understand. It's like a, it's like a parrot. Repeat, you know. Let's just repeat what we hear. Repeat what, but then break down to me so I can understand why I'm doing this. But we don't do that. You know, don't just set me up like a parrot and start mimicking to me, and then I sit and follow what you do. You know, like when they was teaching me blueprints, 
you know, they would tell you to go and pull it out the, out the drawer and everything, and you know, and you got to build this, you know, this but say I had to walk and talk as we were building. But then, hey, show me what to, you know, what to look for. You know, Blueprint tells you every, every part that you need to build this. You know, you need so many screws, you need so many this and so many, you know, but don't just go get it from me. Tell me what I need to go get and tell me why I need it so I'll know how to build it. So when you ain't here, I can still build, you know, because you done showed me what this means. You know, they got different diodes and different resistors and they for different places that you put them in. I was wiring and soldering. You know, what is this iron or this soldering? You know, I, you know, they, well, you know, so see, you ask me this question. <laughs> I've always been like that. I want to know. You know, you, you're just acting too much. Just do, no, I wasn't just a do-it person. I just want to know, you know, what to do, Charlotte, why I'm doing that. Right. And people that get upset, which, you know, that those are not good teachers. You know, when you, you know, sit and somebody beside them and they spoke, no, they supposed to be answering you. They just want to, you know, uh-uh, don't go that way. Uh -uh. You never learn that way. And they let you know that they shouldn't be teachers. You know, because everything was getting on their nerves. Why are you asking so many questions? Why am I supposed to ask? Suppose you're not here tomorrow and I got to read this blueprint myself and build this project myself. What do I do? Like still today. And I'm talking about leaders teaching their people and not, you know, supposed to be teaching them. Oh, God help us. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. You see what he's saying? If you really teach, look, look at what he's saying here. So that sin they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. See, if you really hear the truth, ain't nobody got to tell you to stop doing something. When they really teaching it and breaking it down to you, you'll know right from wrong. Are y'all still with me so far? This is what he's saying. Right. Yes, Lord, we hear you. Oh, God, this is so good. Look at 13, y'all still with me? And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? If it's something in the Bible that you're reading and you don't understand, you won't understand none of it. Because just like you thought when you was reading that this is what it was, you go through the Bible thinking this is what it means. Are y'all still with me so far? Right. And that's what happened in the body of Christ. That's why God is turning this thing around and he's going to do it suddenly. When you read, he's going to give you the revelation like boom right then. It ain't going to be something that you have to seek out, search out. He's going to give it to you. Boom, right there. The sower sows the word. See, he's breaking it down now about the parable. The sower, which was Jesus, he was sowing the word. How was he sowing it? To, right, teaching it. He was teaching it. He was sowing the word. He was teaching them. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. See there? He comes away. He comes immediately. You probably need to have heard the word. Several instances you done heard the word. Forgive. You know, you're in a, you're in a service. And in and, and, and the teaching, it was like, forgive. Satan snatched that right away. You didn't hear that. And before you even leave out the place, something going to make you mad and you, and you done forgot that you're supposed to forgive. Are y'all still with That's how he snatches. He snatches stuff like real, real quick right away. So now you heard someone but the one that you, the thing that you were supposed to hear, you didn't hear. Because he comes immediately like that. Are you all with me? Before you can get to the door, you're mad at each other and going through changes. Because he snatched the word right away. It never did get to your heart. It was still in your head. But it didn't drop down in your heart. Y'all understand what I'm saying so far? So he comes immediately and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. Look here at 16. These likewise are the ones who sown on stony ground, who when they heard the word, see he's telling you different, you know what he's doing? He's telling you about different types of hearts. That's what he's doing. He's telling us about different, see it's the ground, you know how the ground is. You know, sometime when you go to plant, a, a, a plant, when you go and plant after the winter season, it's real hard. You know, you gotta really dig and turn that ground over. 
And sometimes, you know, when you go out there, if they've taken care of the ground and did different things, it's more softer. You know, you can turn it over better. That's how it is with hearts. Come on out. Some of us got cold, stony hearts, rebellion. Can't tell you nothing. Are y'all see y'all been around folks like that? You know, you be trying to get, you know. No, I want y'all to understand what I'm saying. When you'd have made up in your mind that you got something going on that you know, it's hard to break that. That's what I'm saying. I've had to cry out to break some things in me. Yeah. You know, I share with y'all how when I went to beauty school, I went to two different beauty schools. The first one had trained me one way. Are y'all listening to me? Then the second one that I went to trained me another way. So I kept falling back, David, to the way that they had trained me before with the new school. And they says, no, that's not how you do it. But see, I have been trained. What You see what I'm saying? And it ain't easy to break something, you know. But this is how you break it. Hold your place down. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Hold your place. God had to teach me this. Is it all right if I teach you all what God taught me? We're going to go back to Mark, but we need this here one. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two. When you get to say amen. amen. Everybody's there. I hear some pages still kind of rattling. You got it, Lou? I didn't ask when you're getting asked you, did you have it? Oh, okay, praise God. Yeah, let's learn to communicate with each other, okay? Okay, if I'm asking you where you're going, don't tell me where you've been. When you get there, say amen, okay? Huh? Second Timothy chapter 2. All right, we're going to start at verse 23. God is teaching us how to have courage and how to have patience and how to walk in love. Are you all with me? And how to really meet people, you know, stubbornness, you know, because that's the spirit too. You know, Satan does that. Look at 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. You see what happens when you don't understand? Somebody is telling you something, and you're trying to tell them something. That's how it was at the school. And they was trying to avoid this foolishness that was in me. Oh, I'm serious. I'm just telling how God broke it down to me. And so then I could start telling them how they had trained me over there, but they didn't want to hear that. They had, had nothing to do with where I had got trained before. We training different here. Y'all still, I'm, I'm, that's how they did me. You know, and I thought it was wrong, Debbie. I did. I said, now, they, they could be a little softer with me. My goodness. You know, don't they know I was trained a different way? <laughs> right. But see, I'm going back and forth. Foolish saying I should have shut up. Are y'all still with me? Okay. I had to learn that. Come on now. Oh, look what he said. And a servant of the Lord must not crawl, but be gentle to all, able to teach patience. And did you all know what I told you all about patience? Patience ain't something you stand in line and you wait, you know, and the line is long. Patience is consistent. It's what you believe in God for, you stay consistent in it. That's patience. When all hell is breaking loose, I don't care what's going on, a storm going on, but you can I still believe it. Look like it ain't real, look like it ain't gonna come to pass, but I still believe it. Are y'all still with me? It don't matter. It, it don't, I'm being consistent. It don't look like it's going to change. I don't care. I've been standing on long enough. But I'm, I'm still, come on out, y'all. What did I am doing? I'm still standing, right? That's right. That's patience because it's consistency, being consistent on what you believe. That's why we can't get what God promised us. We don't stand on it long enough. It's a consistency that you, I don't care how I'm really in the right, but when it gets through and it does fly, I'm still standing and going in that position, in that direction that I said God promised me. And I'm not going to give up on it because God don't lie. And he watch over his word and he performs it. But he can't perform it if I don't got off my slot. Got to be consistent. Are y'all still with me, so? All right. Persistent. That's patience. You can jot that down. Patience is persistent. That's what it is. Nothing else. Yes, Lord, we still here with you. Now look, at, look what it says here in 25. This is how you're going to break these stubborn spirits and stuff. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. See, in humility, you can correct anything when your spirit is right. Are y'all still with me? Because love does what? It covers and hides a multitude of whatever is going wrong. But 
you have to have your spirit right when you're trying to correct somebody. Because they're going to come at you and say all kind of stuff. They're going to come at you. Because I was coming at the lady. No, uh -uh, that ain't how I was learning. No. She said, but you're not holding your curling irons right. I said, well, this is how I learned. When I should have said, well, show me how. Well, this is how I learned. I tell you, pride is ugly. I had to be broke down. I'm serious. God had to break me down. I wouldn't have never been a teacher. Not with the attitude that I had. Uh-uh. Because I had no patience for grown folks. Because I thought they was foolish. They ought to know better. <laughs> Honey, patience ran out real quick. And he told me he's going to turn me upside down so he could teach me how to be a teacher. I'm telling God, I have to teach you how to be a teacher. Just because you go to school and learn how to be a teacher through educational way. That don't mean nothing. God had to tear all this stuff down, uproot it, and turn you around and show you how he wants you to be. So you see what it's saying here in 25? In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. We have to know how to correct people with humility and patience. If God perhaps would grant them, see that? You can't make them change. Look what it says. If God perhaps would grant them repentance so that you may know the, so that they may know the truth. God have to get in there and grant that. You can't, I don't care how much you talk, how much you try to tell them, you know. He have to get in there, but he gets in there through our humility. That's how he gets in, through our humility. And this is what happens. That they may know the truth. See, they'll never know the truth if you're hollering and screaming and going through changes. You have to walk in humility there. And that they may look 26. And that they may what? Come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. So we ain't wrestling with flesh and blood. It's the devil that gets in there and push and pull on us. See there it says that they may come to their senses. They let you know somebody else didn't grab their senses. And escape the snare of the devil having taken, look here, been taken captive by him to do his will. See there? And we need to recognize this ain't them. I'm not going to even come at this like this. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This ain't them. I'm not coming like this. I'm going to go over here and get my spirit right and pray and ask God to help me get in humility because I don't like how they come in. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you well, I won't go down. But sometimes you feel as though, I don't know, it's them, but it's not them until you really recognize that it's something that's in them making them operate totally different and have really, didn't they say take their sense? They don't even see it like you see it. Come on now. But we got to see how they see it. Come on now. We got to have discernment. We got to see how they see it. Put ourselves in that position. You know, wow, something is going on here. Because if I get upset and get angry with them, they ain't going to change. Because now it's just fire bills fire. You see what I'm saying? It's, you know, right. Iron sharpens iron. Right. That's what happens. So now everybody's coming, you know, roughing together. And then, boom, nothing happens. But, you know, we got to let God get in it, right? And this is how we let him get in it, through what? Through humility, praise God. Okay, now let's go back to Mark. Did that help us? Right. God is trying to help us to walk in these gifts that he's given us. And we need to operate them in them the way that he planned for us to operate them. Because you got to come out of yourself. Did you all know that? You can't operate in God's gifts in yourself. Hard as I try, it don't work. Because don't nobody want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> they, they really don't. But if you come a different way, God got their heart. He'll soften their hearts to hear because now you're coming the way that God wants you to come. Is that making sense? Oh, okay. Well, let's go here back to Mark 5. 4, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 4. Look at 16, likewise, so on it. 16, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness. Now look at 17. And they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterwards when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. See that? For the word's sake. You're going through changes with folks, you need to be putting the word on them. But now you putting your emotions on them and tell them how you feel now. And then they stumble. Y'all see what I'm saying? Are y'all still with me? This ain't easy. This is not an easy, easy message. But you know, if we follow it, you'd be surprised how God can get in it. Because if you're trying to tell somebody something and don't have the word on it, they're not going to, God can't get in it. That's the point I'm trying to make. 
Always put the word of God on there, you know. If it ain't, but, you know, we're both Christians. Now, let our light shine. Now, we shouldn't be arguing and fussing like this. Are y'all still with me? Is this making any kind of sense, though? Put God's word in it and watch God get in it. To pray for her. You remember it, right? She was doing so good. She was just, she had it real bad, autism, you know. She would just sit and just rock and bump her head. And I would take her in another room, you know, not doing service, but what service was going, I'd take out of service and go in another room. And she became really, really stable in her new life, doing real good. And the school wrote home and asked the mother had they changed her medicine, or, you know, because she had changed so. He wrote a letter, and so her mother came to me a week before and told me about the letter. And the next week, her husband got a job out of town, a better paying job, and he left that church. Oh, boy, that broke my heart. You see what I'm saying? Because she was coming on through. See, Richard, that, this is what it's talking about. You done heard the word. They was there, got their baby, getting their baby free and everything. But now, see how the devil come in? The devil know that their baby was getting free. And see how he came in so that he could take them away from being trained and taught, not knowing if he waiting till his baby came. He could have got, God would have gave him a better job because he stayed in the teaching and the training so that he could grow once he got out there where he was going. And a lot of people don't. And this is what the word is saying. Can I read it again? This is exactly what it's saying. Thank you, Father. Oh, God. 19. And the cares of this world the deceitful of riches and desires for other things entered in and choked that word and becomes unfruitful. See, it then choked out everything that he had heard. He came now looking for help for his daughter, coming consistently. And then when he got that opportunity, see what happened? The word was choked right out of him because he wasn't thinking that God can carry me better and do better. You see what I'm saying? Use the word. God said, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But see, when we have a desire to go here, we don't listen. And you miss out. Because it's like God want to really do. You know, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You know, to have a daughter that's handicapped when she could have been free all the way because of a few dollars. And who knows how long the job going to keep you. Come on now. Come on, it's, it's so many things that you have to really, you know, get in this word and be led by God. It's so important, saints. So now let's go on a little farther and see about these other hearts. But these are the ones sown on good ground, 20. Those who hear the word and what? Accept. Come on now. You can hear the word and don't accept it. That's another thing. A lot of people hear the word, but they don't accept it. Hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some 30 fold, some 60, and some 100. Every phase, they bear fruit on the 30, they bear fruit on the 60, and bear fruit on the 100. They was tested in all of those grounds. And each one that they was tested in, they passed it there, but they bear fruit. They bear fruit. They bear fruit until they got to the 100 fold. Now, they are powerful against this devil. Now they can help others and stand in the gap. Are you listening to me? Right. And God can make them CEOs of the company now because they waited on God. Are y'all listening to me? And God can get the sick ones out the hospital because they waited on God. And their power and their authority was send the word to heal and set free and deliver. Are y'all with me? And that's what we want to come, right? Put your hand on your heart. Father, we no longer want to be just hearers of your word. We want to become doers. We want to accept the word when we hear it so that we can go 30, 60, and 100. So that we can walk out and do this that you have hand for us to do. You called us for such a time as this. You created us for this hour and this generation, Lord God. And Father, we got our hands on our heart, giving our hearts to you today so that we can go through that. 30, 60, and 100. We thank you, Father, because you went through it, Jesus. We want to go through it, too. And so tonight, we claim it, we take it, and we are no longer going to be victims. We're going to be victors. And we give you glory and in praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen.
Let's go to Matthew 10. I know I teach this a lot, but go, bear with me. Cause it'll get in you. Praise God. You get back to your chair, please. This is Jesus. Now he, you know, he was training and teaching. Now he's calling his disciples. You know, let me say this to you all. God calls us people. People can't call us. God have to call us. Because people don't know your heart. God knows your heart. That's why he said many are called, but what? If you are chosen. So when God starts choosing folks, we shouldn't be getting jealous about nothing, competition about. Because God knew why he called them. He knew what they would do. He knew exactly the in and outs of everything. So he walked with a lot of them. But he called 12. You know, even though it didn't look like he should have called some of them, you know, because they coming at him and they were in competition and they were doing things. But see, he knew their hearts. He knew that he would call them eventually. He could get their hearts tuned in, you know, Chris, tuned in. And he, they could be one of his disciples, you know. And that's how God chooses. You know, choose like man choose, you know. A lot of times we say, well, how did they get, you know, like they say when you get to heaven, you're going to say, how did they get to heaven? You know, <laughs> right. Just like the little lady, they they were giving rewards. They had rewards stacked all up. And uh, she was a prayer warrior. That's all she did was pray. But they did everything. They talked, they sang, they danced and everything. And so when they was calling out, they was like, wow, who's big? You know, they saw this big trophy. And they called Miss Mary. They said, come up here and get your trophy. And all the ones like, even her elder, even her pastor. How did she get? He said, the reason you had the church that you had was because of her. She prayed and interceded so that you could have that church. That's why she got it. Are y'all see what I'm saying? So you don't always have to be outward. You know, your your gift don't always have to be an outward gift. You know, but just long as you do what you're supposed to do with your gift. You know, and not murmur and complain. Just obey what God is saying and watch. You know, and that's how it is. It, it's a lot in learning the kingdom, saints. It ain't no overnight thing learning the kingdom. You know, it takes more than just sitting up listening. You got to accept it and begin to work on yourself to walk in it. And then God will choose you. Look at what it's saying here. And then he had called his 12 disciples to him. He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness, all kinds of diseases. See that? He gives you power for that. When he called you, see, that's why I didn't want to be called by nobody else. Because, you know, anybody can put their hands on you. No, no, I want to be called by him so he can give me what I need to go out there and do what I needed to do. You know, that's why people going to school and getting degree, you know, theology and doing all that. No, 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 no. That don't get you in the door to, with no power. You know, let the one created you and give you power. So when you, he send you out there, you'll be ready, you know, to do what he sent you out there to do. And so this is why he worked with his disciples so much. You know, a lot of people would have thought, wow, how did he pick Peter? You know, Peter kept coming against him. But he saw Peter's heart. He knew eventually he was going to get Peter. You know, he was going to keep praying for Peter until Peter's heart got soft. You know, because Peter was coming up against everything. But he loved Peter. You know what I'm saying? He said, now, Peter is just dynamite. You know, but I just got to keep praying. I can't get angry at him, you know, because I want to kick him to the curb. But, you know, I'm going to keep praying because there is a call on his life. Everything that Jesus was saying, Peter was coming up against it. You know, so he had to tell him, devil, I'm just get behind me right now, okay? <laughs> but what really got Peter was well, when God told him, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crow. He says, no, I'll die with you. See what I'm saying? See, we can be in our emotions and say things that we really don't mean. And so he said, no, you won't, you, you know. That's why he asked Peter. He asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Followers, Peter said, yeah, I love you. He asked him again, Peter, he said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Do you love me? He asked Peter three times. You know why he asked? Because Peter denied him three times. That's why he said, when that rooster crow three times, and boy, when that came to peace. See, when you done did folks wrong, eventually, it's got to get you eventually that you'll be broken. And when Peter saw that what Jesus was saying about him and everything, and he saw, wow, that, oh, my God, he really loved me. My God, look. Right. And it dawned on him, and he just ran. But I thank God that he wasn't full of pride, though, like Judah. Judas killed himself. Right. See, that's what pride do. When you find out that you're out of order, you go another different route. Okay. 
Right. That will make you kill yourself because now you're shamed. You don't want nobody to know, you know, this, that, and the other. But Peter had a heart. See, that was the heart that Peter had. Right. right. Just like David. People was wondering, how did he choose David? He said David had a heart after God's own heart. There's two kinds of heart. It's a weak heart and a wicked heart. David had a weak heart. He was weak and he fell, but his heart wasn't wicked, okay? Are y'all still with me? Yeah. So, you know, God will begin to tell you how to discern different things and, and don't look at folks all funny. You know, some people, it just look like hard. They'll never get it. Those are the ones that will get it. Okay. That's right. They're just trying to understand something. Peter was trying to understand this, that, this, this power that he was walking. <laughs> Peter was trying to understand that power. He was walking, and that's why he had all these courts. Come on, y'all still with me? Yeah. Right. That's what he was doing. Luke walked with him because he wanted to know the power he had, you know, how to be a better doctor. Come on. Right, because they saw all of what Jesus was doing. And that's how we want to be. You know, like, I started looking about three or four years ago at different leaders and stuff like that, and different ones I started to desire. The ones that I was following, I thought, mm. you know, because your eyes will start coming open, you know. And it was the ones that was hitting me, you know, like, get this together and, and turn from that. And I thought, oh, my God, why you got me watching them? They, are y'all still with me? But it's something that they have to break off so that you can come through. Because yeah. it's there. God have chose you. But it's some things you have to. Yeah, Y'all still with me? Yeah. Right. And you got to love folk. Yeah. I thought, my God. So when, when the man got through, I thought, wow, I didn't answer that question the other day. Right? See, he'll start putting stuff on your mind. Yeah. Well, I didn't answer that right. Yeah. Do I, did I do need to repent? I'm telling stuff like that, but I'm, the flesh don't like that. But, honey, you have to get to a point where don't nothing matter but him. I'm telling you, that's how you have to get. And you'll start being set free like that. But as long as you matter, it ain't going to work. Amen. No. You have to let him matter. Look what he said to him. So now the names, he told you the, the names of them, okay? He told us all the names and everything. Now, number five. Let's look at verse five. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them. See that? Command. Saying, do not go into the way of the Gentiles. And do not enter a city of the Samaritans. See, you have to follow instructions when Jesus started telling you to do things. Are y'all still with me? You can have no two verses and think that you're going to open up a church. You have to follow instructions. <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't care how deep you think you are. He was giving them instructions. He chose them. And he's telling them, now, this is what you're going to do. And when you do it this way, you're going to be powerful. And you're going to do exactly what I ordained you to do. And this is what he was telling them. So he chose them. And he told them what I, see that what he told them what they was going to do? Right. He's going to send them out, but go where I tell you to go. Now look at six. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He told them go to the church. Because those are the people that was lost. You know, we're going to be trying to set the folks free, and we lost. So he said, now go to the church and let them know they're out of order. And this is what they need to do. Right. Go there. But see, some of them would go somewhere else, you know, because they thought, you know, the church is, the church ain't all right. Because there's a lot of things that we don't do that we have not been trained and taught how to do. Right. And a lot of times, a lot of them don't understand this because a lot of churches still don't talk about demons. They have no clue about demons. And it's dangerous. It really is. So look what happened. He told them to go where? To the church. And as you go, look, preach what? See, he didn't say preach the church. He said, when you go preach the kingdom of heaven, tell them it's at hand. See, and this is what happens for the kingdom. Look what happened. You heal the sick. You cleanse the lepers. You raise the dead. You cast out demons. Freely you receive and freely you give. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Leaders, that's what they're supposed to be doing. All this other stuff they're doing, too much entertainment, you know. I used to feel bad because they would have, you know, they said, well, you know, you got children's church? I said, no, God didn't tell me to have no children's church. He said, we all got the same spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit, and so we all have church together. And you'd be surprised if you ask the little children, they're no more than the grown folks, you know, because they're pure. They love hearts and stuff. They pick it up faster. Yeah, well, are you going to uh, summer camp? No, we don't have summer camp. Mm -mm. Right. You know, all this entertainment, you know, and it throws them totally away from who Jesus is. Get them fixed up first and then let them go and entertain. But first get them, you know what I'm saying, Marge? Get them rooted and grounded. Are y'all still with me? We were at a church I never will forget. Crystal was about 12 years old then or something. Oh, she was eight? Okay. Oh, okay. No, she couldn't. You know that's your child. 
And we was at this church, and they had the pastor's son was the pastor, you know, the junior pastor, you know, children's church. And he was carrying the children to club, to summer camps and all this all the time. And they asked if Chris was going. Carolyn said, no, she can't go. Well, you know, she was upset because the children was going and everything. And it wasn't long that we left that church. You know, just, you know, just time up, season. I didn't even know why we was leaving, but we left. Honey read the paper about, what, a month or so later? And the son was in jail for molesting the children that he was carrying on those things, on those summer camps. You see what I'm saying? That's why we got to be discerning, you know, just because everything look good ain't good. Right. You know, right. The pastor's son, who was the children's pastor, had him in jail. Right. That's why you better be discerning. You know, people just, oh, yeah, my child can go, no, oh, I need to know more about that, not more. Y'all ain't telling me enough right now. Right. What all do y'all do at what time y'all, you know, and where you're at, and you got any, you know, sponsors, you know, that's coming with you, chaperones, you know, and stuff, and let me check them out and ask the Lord about them, okay? Right. It's, it's just so much you have to know and so much you have to do because they get caught up, you know, with this out of appearance and, you know, and they wolves, you know, in sheep clothes. Mm -mm. So we told Crystal, see, you, you see, if you, we didn't let you go, that's why. Yeah. She was upset at first, but when she found out what was going on, she calmed down. She came around. And so let's look at nine. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belt. Look at that. See that? You don't, don't, you know? And when they start telling you, this, this is what disturbs me with people that got names and titles. You know, they're supposed to be somebody in Christ. You ask them to come and speak at your church, they start telling you how much they charge. He said, don't even do that. He said, because what you're charging, I'm going to give you even more. Because, see, you're going to go there not only looking for money, you're going to go there raising the dead, and they're going to give you more than you would ever ask them to give because they love their loved ones. And if you got this kind of power to do that, they'll give you money that you didn't even ask, more than what you even asked for. You know, that, that's our problem. We start putting the world in stuff. You know what I'm saying? We throw the world, you know, the world doing.